great Americans, Crispus Attucks. Weekly Reader, Early Learning Library, Great Americans, Crispus Attucks. Crispus Attucks escapes slavery to become an American sailor and rope maker. Find out how he became one of the first to die in America's fight for independence when he bravely stood up to the British soldiers in 1770. In the table of contents, you can see there are four chapters, including a glossary and an index. Chapter 1, From Slavery to Freedom. Crispus, Crispus Attucks was the first American to die in the United States fight for independence. Attucks died in a fight called the Boston Massacre, along with four other people. The death of Attucks and other men made people angry. After they died, many people all over America wanted to fight for independence. Crispus Attucks was born in 1723 in Framingham near Boston, Massachusetts. His mother was a Native American. His father was from Africa. Because his father was a slave, Attucks was also a slave. When Attucks was old enough, he helped his owner buy and sell cattle. Attucks had some freedom, but he wanted to work for himself. He did not want to remain a slave. Attucks wanted to work on ships. British soldiers shot at Crispus Attucks, Lower Wright, and other Americans during the Boston Massacre. Attucks left Boston on a whaling ship like this one. These sailors are cutting apart the whale to use its oil and other parts. In 1750, when Attucks was 27, he ran away. He went to work on a whaling ship. The ship sailed out to sea. Attucks's owner, William Brown, could not find Attucks. Brown offered people money to find him and bring him back, but no one could find Attucks. Finally, Brown stopped looking for him. Attucks was finally free. For the next 20 years, he worked on ships as a sailor. When Attucks was not at sea, he worked as a rope maker. Some ships at the Boston docks were whaling ships. Other ships carried food, cloth, and other things to sail. Chapter 2, British Soldiers on Boston Streets. Massachusetts was a colony. Massachusetts and the other American colonies had to obey the laws of Great Britain. In 1767, Great Britain passed a law that made Americans angry. The law taxed some goods. In 1768, the governor of Massachusetts was worried. He thought people were getting too angry about the tax. He asked the British king to send soldiers. The governor wanted the soldiers to protect the people who collected taxes. King George III wanted to keep the American colonies for Britain. He sent British soldiers to America. Attucks and other sailors and rope makers did not like the soldiers. When the soldiers were off duty, they worked at other jobs. One of the jobs was rope making. People started hiring the British soldiers to make rope. Attucks and the other American rope makers had a hard time finding jobs. British soldiers marched through Boston streets in 1768. There were so many soldiers in Boston that they did not have enough places to stay. Some slept in tents in the middle of the city. Other people in Boston did not like the soldiers either. Seeing the soldiers reminded the people that the British king was in charge. The soldiers bossed people around. 
people became more and more angry. Something was going to happen soon. Sometimes the soldiers had to live in people's homes. The people did not like the soldiers staying with them. They used their beds and ate their food. Chapter 3, The Boston Massacre. On March 5, 1770, something really did happen. Some boys started teasing a British soldier in Boston. They called him names. The soldier hit one of the boys with the end of his gun. People around the boy grew angry. Many people started gathering on the city streets. Attucks was on the docks, working with other sailors. He heard about the people gathering in the streets. He started to lead a group of sailors to the town square in front of the old state house. The old state house was a government building in the center of Boston. Today, the brick circle marking the site of the Boston Massacre lies in front of it. The British soldier called his officer and the officer gathered eight soldiers in the town square. The soldiers were afraid the people might hurt them. The British soldiers knew many people did not like them. People sometimes yelled at them on the streets. Somebody rang a church bell. Usually, the bell only rang when there was a fire. Many people thought a fire had started and they came to help put it out. When they got to the town square, however, they did not see flames. They joined the crowd of people yelling at the soldiers. The Christ Church, or Old North Church in Boston, had the first church bells in North America. The bells were rung for church services or when there was a fire. When addicts arrived, some people were throwing snowballs and rocks at the soldiers. Some people were daring the soldiers to shoot. No one knows exactly what happened next. Some people said Attucks was holding a stick. Others said he was holding a club. Some said he struck a soldier's gun. Others said he did not hit the gun. The soldiers were nervous. They were ready to start shooting. Some people said they heard a voice yell, Fire! One of the soldiers fired and he shot Attucks. The other soldiers began to shoot. When they stopped firing, Attucks and two other men were dead. Two more men died later from their wounds. Six other people were also hurt. After the shooting, the British officer and the soldiers left Boston. Crispus Attucks was the first person the soldiers killed. Samuel Gray, a rope maker, and James Caldwell, a sailor, also died that day. Samuel Maverick and Patrick Carr died later. Maverick was only 17 years old. People thought Attucks and his men were heroes. Others thought they were just part of a mob. A man named Samuel Adams wanted people to get excited and to get angry at the British soldiers. He called the shootings the Boston Massacre. Thousands of people came to the men's funeral. They made a big procession to the cemetery. Stores were closed and bells rang. Samuel Adams said the British troops should leave Boston. Chapter 4, Honoring the Victims The soldiers who shot Attucks and the other men were arrested. They were accused of murder. The soldiers said that the crowd was dangerous. They said they had shot at Attucks and the other men because they were afraid. They believed people in the crowd were going to attack them. After their trial, six of the soldiers were set free. Only two soldiers were punished. For the next six years, P. 
people honored March 5th as the day of the Boston Massacre. On July 18, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was read in Boston. It was read from the old State House balcony above the place where Attucks was shot. Many people came to hear the Declaration of Independence. They were ready to fight the British. In 1888, a statue was built in the Boston Common, a park. The statue honors Attucks. In 1998, the United States government made a special coin to honor Attucks and other African Americans who fought for American independence. The names of the victims of the Boston Massacre are carved at the top of this statue in the Boston Common. Their grave is in the granary bearing ground next to the park. Glossary. Accused, blame for doing a crime. Colony, the land and people ruled by another country. Declaration of Independence, the statement made by the American colonies telling Great Britain that the colonies were free. Docks, places along the shore where ships can come to load and unload goods. Massacre, the act of killing many people who do not or cannot fight back. Mob, a crowd of people acting out of control, often damaging property or hurting other people. Off duty, not at work as a soldier or sailor. Procession, a group of people walking on an organized way. Slave, a person treated as property and forced to work without pay. Taxed, charged a fee or sum of money by the government. The government uses the money to pay its workers and to pay for other government costs. Whaling ship, a ship that is used to hunt whales. About the author, Monica L. Roche has a master's degree in creative writing from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee where she is currently teaching composition, literature, and creative writing. She likes to write fiction, but sticking to the facts is fun too. Monica lives in Milwaukee near her six nieces and nephews to whom she loves to read books.